suppose the great thing about Wexford is triumph over adversity because they managed to put on wonderful productions in situations which are almost impossible to do that. One of the things I say more often than anything else in my work here in Ireland is the Irish do not actually realise how famous and well regarded this festival is internationally. <laughs> I heard a record one day and I thought, why is this opera never performed? A recent perform, a performance by a company in the United Kingdom called uh, Opera Rara, which specializes in, in recording rare operas. This is an opera written in 1855 and after it was first performed, was never performed again. I cannot understand it because it is absolutely the most charming, delightful uh, piece of music. Well, Le Cours de Salomon is a fun little piece, very flirtatious, very coquettish, and it is based on a character from the Moliere play, uh, which is a French playwright, and um, about a woman who's taking her revenge on men because she was hurt, her heart was broken. La Cour de Silly Men, or Silly Men's Court, is based on a character from a Moliere play, the Misanthrope. And it, this is a lady who is rejecting gentlemen all the time. And it's a bit of, it's a really kind of souffle of a piece, very light, very easy going, not much of a story, but a great chance for some lovely singing. Silly Men herself has some extremely difficult coloratura material to do, and I'm sure Claudia Boyle will make a great success of that. And the whole thing is very enjoyable in a kind of a, a light-hearted fashion, a very tuneful and very, very entertaining. When I first heard that we were doing Maria, I was very excited when I heard the music. I thought, you know, how did this incredible opera get lost? And then what took me by surprise is that when I sent out the information that we were doing this this year, that we were doing Maria this year, the feedback I got from international journalists were, was incredible. This opera was first staged in Warsaw back in 1906, and although it was quite a success at the time, it didn't carry on. We don't know why. It's very tuneful, it's very enjoyable, it's very dark, certainly, and very strange, but nonetheless, it is a powerful piece. But I think we have found this year one of those very, very special sleepers, we call them at Wexford. Uh, a really, uh, almost a masterpiece, I'd say. The composer probably most closely associated with our festival is Donizetti. Um, we're well known in Italy, for instance, as being the premier Donizetti theatre outside of Italy. So we'll present uh, our 16th different title by by Donizetti. This one is quite unusual because he wrote it back in 1831 for the great tenor Antonio Rubini, but uh, it never got produced for some strange reason and didn't get on the stage until 1839 when La Scala put it on and it wasn't an enormous success. Pity because it's a nice piece, it's an early work of Donizetti's, very much in his light comic vein, the kind of thing that L'Elysir d'Amore, that most popular of Donizetti comedies, or Don Pasquale, would be more close to the kind of music it produces. It's a very simple story, the, the Dauphin of Paris, the French Dauphin, the, the next, the, the successor to the throne, uh, is being married off to a girl from Navarre. Navarre is a part of, of French-Spanish border, and still, still there indeed to this day, but the Princess of Navarre has been been allocated as his wife to be and he's of course a bit concerned about what kind of a lady will it be and in those days you couldn't just sort of go to Skype and see what the girl was like it took a long time to find out what they're going to be so he put, puts up with a ruse he says why don't I go down to the inn she's going to be staying in on her away from from Navarre to Paris on a halfway house that she's going to stay overnight disguise myself as an ordinary noble and let's have a look at the girl and of course as he does he meets her in disguise and luckily they both fall instantly off Hey! 